Things are happening. God is always on the move. You know, in the spirit realm, there is constant motion. You know, there's no space and time in the spirit realm. And, and in that, you know, one of the things that the Lord desires is our presence in his realm. And he set things in such an order because he is a God of order. And divine order is essential in the life of his children. See, the world is not in divine order. They're in chaos. Everything is about them. Me, myself, and I is their order. But in the kingdom of God, there's a divine order. And in this divine order, it is essential to understand the, the purpose of divine order. And, and in the military, there's a divine order. We might not call it in the physical military a divine order, but in the spiritual military, there's a divine order. And on you have generals and so forth, just like in the, in the regular military, but there's a divine order. There's a protocol that's established for divine order, so things are not brought into confusion. And when we fall out of the divine order, I can tell you that not only do things begin to happen around us, but when you're out of order, the closest people to you know before you know. And then when you finally find out, the world knows. And it is essential about divine order. And God has set this so perfectly for each and every one of us to fall into and to follow. The whole thing is, is to begin to recognize that there is a divine order and whether we're walking in it or not. Amen? You know, when the Lord set the Ten Commandments, and, and go to Deuteronomy 5. Even though this, these are divine rules, but the purpose of that was to keep individuals into a divine order so that they could be exposed. In a divine order, there is a divine covenant. When you fall out of divine order, I can tell you that you are falling out of covenant. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, and in verse 1, it says, Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the status, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your hearing today, that you may learn them and be careful to observe them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. And the Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive. The Lord talked with you face to face on a mountain from the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you that at that time to declare to you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire, and you did not go up to the mountain. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The word Egypt means world, place of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. He said, the first thing he says, and this is order, you shall have no other gods before me. This is the divine order. You shall have no other gods before me. In other words, I am the Lord your God and there is no other. You know, many people, and when you don't have the Lord first in your life, it's called, uh, in this, people commit spiritual adultery. It's actually called idolatry. Because anything that is between you and God is called an idol. And he says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or shall or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under, under the earth you shall not bow down to them nor serve them for i am the lord your god i am jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me that's a curse the iniquity so he says make no image it's amazing how many people make images I remember when I was in the uh, religious group, 
you know, after I got in front of the statute and I would pray, oh, forgive me. You know, do a few repentance things and get up and leave and I didn't change. But showing mercy to those, to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. He says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. These are divine order that God sets. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Now the Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath. So it's not a specific day for us anymore. In fact, we're really not under the commandments, but the commandments of the laws are within us now. So they have been fulfilled by Jesus Christ. In other words, we are actually to be more submissive and obedient than the commandments. He says, your righteousness should exceed the righteousness of the scribes. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 16. He said, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be what? Long. And that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not hear, bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, his male servants, and his animals and possessions, or anything that is in your neighbor's. These words the Lord spoke to all of your assembly, the mountain from the mist of the fire, the cloud, the darkness with a loud voice and he added no more and he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me now on these two tab tablets of stone the first covenant was broke that a second covenant could be fulfilled amen because jesus would now become the law he was actually the law the written word that came into the flesh but he came to fulfill the law that we could have relationship amen because they didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit to obey the law. But you and I do. But it doesn't mean we're under the law. Because as we're being led by the Spirit, we are fulfilling the law. So there is not a law there. But there is a divine order of law that's called a spiritual law now. That you and I are to follow. So setting the divine order is a, important in our life as a believer. Because God sets things in order. And it is always God first so everybody got it god's first so if it's god's if it's god first that means it's his will first it's his will now there are three wills of god good acceptable and perfect but in his divine order it is god first amen i tell people there's three wills of god there's god god and god that's it. If God says he's first, then he's first. If it's anything to do with God and he, you're supposed to be a part of it, then it's first. If he says go across the world, then it's first. Has everybody got it? But so many people will go, what about your family? No, God is first. If God is first in your life, he takes care of everything else. He takes care of your family. He takes care of everything. It's when people fall out of the place of God and begin to be so more concerned with their family than God. Now be, their family becomes an idol. And God is no longer first. And we must be very careful because that is called idolatry. Remember, he is a jealous God. Go to Matthew 6. Divine order. Divine order. Yes, Matthew 6. You know that some people will not do things because they're, they will not leave their family and God's trying to get them to go do something. And it's not doesn't mean that they're leaving their family forever. 
but they're so bound to their spouses and their children and their jobs that they, they can't do anything else. And they, what happens, they get so in debt because the enemy, because they're trying to fulfill themselves with the things of the world and, and please and their families and this and that, that they get so in debt that now they can't even serve God because they're still constantly trying to get out of debt. In Matthew 6. Is everybody there? Oh, praise God. <laughs> Let's start at verse... Um, 31 verse 31 Matthew 6 verse 31 therefore do not what worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear do you know how many people are more concerned about these three things than what God's got to say they will search these three things out before they even go to prayer hold on a second I'll be there I'm coming For after all these things the Gentiles seek. So he's saying the unbelievers seek these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek what? First the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be what? Added to you. This is called divine order. That's called divine order. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then everything will be released. In other words, once you do the promise, it's released. That is divine order. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and things will be added unto you. This is called divine order. Now go to Matthew 7. In verse 7, here's another divine order. It says what? Ask, and it, will be, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. In other words, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. All right? But while you're seeking, you're to be asking, aren't you? So as you ask and seek, you'll find. The thing is, is people ask and run. Oh, Lord, yeah, I need this. Okay, thanks. They're gone. They're not seeking. Why? Because they're not really seen. So is prayer a part of divine order? And we talked about some of this, that praying the price. An individual who is not first in prayer in the morning is out of divine order. Let me tell you, you pray on the way to work without taking time to pray, you're out of divine order. Because what you're doing is fitting God into your schedule instead of you fitting into his. Hello. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that sometimes things happen. Right? And there's sometimes that people have a long two-hour drive or something. Praise God. Man, by the time I used to drive from here to Lake, and by the time I got there, I was a mess because of the presence of God. You opened up my car, the glory poured out. <clears throat> but in this, he says, ask, seek, and knock. That's all associated with prayer. So we're to be watchful in prayer. This is called divine order. And Proverbs 3. You know, when you begin to search the word of God out, you begin to find groups of divine order that he says to do. Certain things of divine order for specific things. Look at verse 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with what? All of your heart. And lean not on your own. In other words, if you can't trust with all of your heart, you're going to lean on your understanding. 
Has everybody got it? So to relinquish yourself from your own understanding, you must trust him with all of your heart. This is a divine order process. It says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will what? Direct your path. So here it is. Trust him. Remove you from your own understanding. Right? Acknowledge him. He's going to direct your path. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Why? So you, the fear of the Lord is reverence. Amen to the Lord. Respect and honor. So as you depart from evil, something's going to happen. He says it's going to be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So he, we just talked about the area where trust, in other words, that inner fight that you and I have, there is a way out through divine order. Trust in the Lord with all of your might. Right? Okay, then you don't have to lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him. He's going to guide your path. Don't be wise in your own eyes. In other words, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It's going to be health to your body. Now look at the next one. Honor the Lord with your what? Possessions. And with the what? First fruits of your what? Increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will, will overflow with new wine. So many people don't give the Lord their first fruits. In other words, God goes and increase. You know, I'll tell you a good idea. Give before the increase comes. If you're a constant giver above, way above, if you're a constant giver above, whether it's time, finances, whatever, if you're a constant giver above, when the increase comes, you're already given. You're already given. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Praise God. And Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 24. And Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What a divine order. Let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. In other words, take off the old man, put on the new man and follow the truth. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Another divine order that he says, abide. He who abides in me and I abide in him. And my words abide in you. We'll ask and we'll receive. Three areas that we must abide in. His presence, in his word and prayer. Has everybody got it? And in fellowship. Forsake not to assemble. It's a divine order. Now I want you to understand something. I want you to just grab hold of this because divine order we look at seeing things put in place but i want you to look at another thing it's god saying divine it's an order from god it's an order from the throne room of god that's why it's called a divine order because he is ordering it has everybody got it he is ordering it god is saying if i order it you obey it you'll be blessed if i order it you disobey it you'll be cursed Real simple. And people wonder why the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Because they're out of divine order. The devil cannot take anything from me and you if we're in divine order. We are in divine protection. He cannot take nothing from you. If we're in divine order. Amen? Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Hallelujah. 
and verse 16. He says, but to the wicked, now is the wicked in divine order or out of divine order? Out of divine order. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes and take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers. So is there a divine order in the area of people, places, and things? Amen. He says, come out from among them. Amen. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest they tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise gives gl glorifies me and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. In other words, divine order will bring salvation. In 1 John chapter 5, And we could go on for weeks. First John chapter five. In verse six. You know, when you get in divine order, the first thing the enemy tries to do is get you out. Because divine order is divine positioning. Without divine order, there is no divine position. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth. And there are three that bear witness in heaven. This is a divine order. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. That's a divine order. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth. That is the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So this is the divine order of tabernacle. In other words, your salvation has a divine order. There's three, three chambers of the tabernacle, isn't there? There's the outer court, the holy place, the most holy place. And each chamber, there's a specific language specific anointing specific function it's a divine order and some people have never made it to the second chamber they'll be believers for 30 years and never make it to the second chamber you know why because they're content with the first one they don't want to know anymore I'm okay I go to church every Sunday yes I got initials on my pew And I put the same amount of money in every week. That buck 25. Hallelujah. <laughs> so there's a divine order of the tabernacle. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. In the spiritual realm. In the physical realm, it was the Spirit. Close, Spirit to Spirit. Right? The water and the blood. So in the natural realm, you access... The tabernacle through the blood, then to the water, which is known as the washing of the word, and then the spirit, which is the most holy place. So there's a divine order of this. Psalm 91. So we call that divine order a divine entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Divine entrance. Everyone say divine entrance. Do you remember the uh, parable about the one where the Lord said he was having a wedding? And everybody was in the wedding. They all had garments on. And somebody came into the wedding, wrong garments. Didn't have any on. He said, how did you get in here? And he threw them out. Where did he throw them? Outer darkness. Why? 
because he tried to come in another way. It was not a divine entrance. He got in another way. Didn't last long, though. Hallelujah. Psalm 91. Is everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it, starting at verse 1. He who what? Dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the wings of the a shadow of, of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I will what? I will trust. Now look it. Here's the divine order. You abide. You're abiding in this place. You're going to have divine protection. It says, verse 3, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl, from the prevalence of pestilence. He's going to cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. So if you wake up with feathers, don't worry about it. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor, shall, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. It says, because you have, uh, go to verse 9. He says, because you have made the Lord uh, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil will befall you. I told you, if you're in divine order, the devil cannot touch you impossible so what does he try to do lure you out no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways in their hands they'll bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample down because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him and I'll set him on high because he has known my name. See, in this dwelling place, there is an exchange. You're exchanging your life for his life. See, he's taking you, and you're taking him. Now you're using his name, and he's calling your name. Or oh, there's a tremendous thing that happens in that divine order. Remember, it's an order that comes from the divine throne room of God Almighty. Galatians 6. And that order in that secret place is called protection. Galatians chapter 6. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah! Galatians 6, 6. It says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be what? Deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows that he shall also reap. That's a divine law. But it's set forth in the divine order. So reap. So reap. Reap. It doesn't say reap, sow. It says sow, reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So by maintaining this divine order of sowing and reaping, you're going to have a harvest. As long as you don't lose heart. And who's going to try to discourage you when things don't seem to be going so well? Listen. The enemy is not going to sit there and let you prosper. He does not want you to grow and mature. He's going to do everything he can to cause you to grow weary, to be discouraged, to be offended, to put your eyes on you and get you out of divine order. 
Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Now, look at Adam and Eve. Eve got out of divine order. She was told not to go near that serpent. In fact, God had spoken to her more than once because the one time you read that it says you cannot eat of the tree and then when she spoke to the serpent, she said you cannot touch the tree either and she didn't know what lying was so she wasn't about to lie. She got out of divine order because she got out of divine position. She should have not gotten there. One thing she did was open up and start speaking to the serpent. Immediately, she lost. Amen? Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. Verse 20. Proverbs 19, verse 20. Listen to the counsel and what? Receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. The Lord's counsel will stand. The reason why that there's the counsel of the Lord or the Lord's counsel is to set things in order. So everybody got it? To set things in order. That's the purpose of the Lord's counsel. In the Lord's counsel, again, we have God, 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 and God. Of course, then you have God and family, and then work. Amen? Amen? And I want you to know that God's associated with ministry. It's God. Everything associated with God, family, then work. You know how many times people, they try, they move to the place where the job is at instead of where the fellowship is at. Does everybody listen? They move to the place where the job is at instead of where the fellowship is at. That's out of order. Because we're to be moving to the place where the fellowship is. And God provides the place of the job there. Has everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. I see many people get out of position because of that. They get promoted and out of position. How many of y'all know the devil loves to promote you out of position? That's what he does. He'll promote you right out of position. <laughs> How many of you all not? Let me share something with you. You know, the devil can remove his demon from you and you can become healed. Look at all the witchcraft that goes on. Why do you think many of the witchcraft thing goes on? So people go to these witch doctors and somebody gets healed. Well, they think they did. The demon just left them. Now all of these people are hearing about this person that got healed, supposedly. But only the Lord is the healer. It's just the demon that left the person. And they start going to the witch doctor and he sucks them all in. You know what happens? That one eventually gets sick and dies and so do the rest of them. Of course, you're not going to hear about that person's dead. But that's how the devil operates. It, it's not who the devil sets free is free. It's who the devil sets free goes back into bondage. It's who the son sets free is free. Because that is divine order. The devil has no divine order. Oh, glory. Go to Job 10. He's got some order, but it isn't divine order. 
He's got demonic order. His order is me, myself, and I. Job 10. Hallelujah. I think it's verse 20. Verse 20. Job 10, 20. Are not my days few? Cease, leave me alone, that I may take a little comfort. Before I go to the place from which I shall not return. To the land of what? Darkness and the shadow of death. The land as dark as darkness itself. As the shadow of death without what? Order. Where even the light is like darkness. In other words, there is no order in darkness. So when you are out of order, you can be sure that you are in darkness. Hallelujah. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. In verse 22 or 21. It says, The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and what? Gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. Verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the what? By the Lord. And his delight is in his way. This is powerful. It says the steps of a good man. Why is he a good man? Because he's in what? Divine order. So the Lord is ordering his steps, isn't he? And here it says, and I'm going to tell you, you got to look at this. It says that the Lord is delighting in the man's ways. The Lord is delighting in the man's ways. Why? Because he's in divine order. The Lord is ordering his steps. And the Lord is delighting in the man's ways. Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord because he is a man in order. Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 22. Some more runner, 21. Uh oh. <laughs> well, Ephesians 6. Maybe it's supposed to be 60. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Ephesians 6 1. No, I'm sorry, it's Ephesians 5 22. 5 22. Ephesians 5 22. He had 45 minutes getting divine order. <laughs> <laughs> 22 what does it say wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the house as also Christ is head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore just as the church is subject to Christ so let the wives be their own husbands in everything 
Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the word or the water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or such things that but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I am speaking concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So in this, there's a divine order in marriage, isn't there? And it doesn't mean slavery. Hello. So many people take this word out of context, let me tell you. Submit to your wife. Submit to your husband. Man, the Bible says submit to one another. Everybody submit to one another. There's only one right. Remember that. Every one of us here is wrong. There's only one right regardless of what. So just respect one another. That's the most important thing that can be done in a marriage is that you respect one another. Because if you can't respect one another, you'll fall out of divine order. Amen? No matter what it is. Same thing with the children. The Bible says children obey your parents why because it's going to be long life to you because <laughs> either your parents are going to kill you or the enemy will <laughs> hallelujah first corinthians chapter 14 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. Divine order. And you know, I, I, I want you to understand something that in divine order, you know whether you're in it or not. It's, it's like plumbing. <laughs> Things flow. You know, if, if the pipe goes this way and this way and up and down, it ta it, it's, it's shaky. It's unstable. When an individual is out of divine order, they usually are unstable. A person that is, relies how they f on how they feel all the time cannot maintain a divine order because they are too easily pushed out of position because they rely on feeling instead of truth. And 1 Corinthians 14 and verse something, are you there? Verse 39, somewhere around there. 1 Corinthians 14, verse something. Let's go back. And verse 33, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33, let's read it. For God is not the what? Author of what? Confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Now, that is very powerful because when you are out of divine order, you are out of peace. And when you are in confusion, you're out of divine order. And the enemy is the author of confusion. Amen? God is not. So it's important to get back in position because when you're out of divine order, you're out of position. These are signs that you and I should know in that area of what's going on. Amen? Go to Colossians 2.
Now, if somebody gets sick or something like that, you can't say, oh, you're out of divine order. Listen, we still live on the earth. Stuff still happens. And the only way you and I learn is going through our sufferings, our trials. The Bible says, <laughs> count it all joy when you go through it, right? And that's the cause us to grow. Your trials and tribulations and sufferings is to establish you, settle you, and perfect you. Amen? So sometimes you may think you're out of position, but you'll have a peace even though you're going through something so you'll know that you are. You know you're in divine order. You know that, okay, cool. Got it. Just an attack.